Hi guys and welcome to an exciting Amir Meet. Uh, today I have with me a man of many hearts. I mean, he, he writes, he has an app, uh, he's also into music. Stick and stay, we're going to get into it when we come back. The first ever app for translating Ghanaian languages. And so let me show you how this works. What has been the feedback so far? Language actually affects uh, how we human beings perceive the world. It's very interesting. So there are some tribes where they always reference, you know, the East and the West to how their body is positioned. And these tribes are actually very good at navigating without a compass, right? So language is very important. It's part of who we are as human beings. And it also uh, encodes essentially our culture, right? So in the digital future, whether we are going to exist or not will depend on whether the machines can understand our speech, our text, and so on. So preserving and building systems that can enable that is essentially preserving our culture. So it's just something exciting. I didn't see anybody doing it or worrying about it, so I felt like I needed to do that. Good. So take us through how the app works. I mean, how does translation come to play with artificial intelligence and all of that? Okay. So when people say artificial intelligence nowadays, uh, they really talk about automation. Mm -hmm. So teaching, say, a computer program to do some task very quickly and very cheaply. Because, say, we have the internet, a human being can't read the entire internet. But a computer program can analyze the entire internet. So it isn't so much intelligence as a way of automating really repetitive tasks mm -hmm. at a high volume. Right? And so in this context, what we do is we have these neural nets. You don't have to worry about what's in them. <laughs> it just teaches you how to associate input to output. So in this case, let's, let's say the input is tree speech, mm -hmm. and the output is English speech. Mm -hmm. So it's teaching how to align the English, say, saying with how are you, mm -hmm. all right? And when it sees, let's say, 25,000 examples, it becomes OK. If it sees 100,000 examples, it becomes even better. At million, it's flawless, <laughs> right? So it's all about feeding the data mm -hmm. to find the patterns and learn how the language works, yeah. Okay, and uh, what has been the feedback so far? It evolves. So it's very important to understand this is a journey, right? It's not like you build the app and you're done. Even Google Translate, right, mm -hmm. today it's still improving. Mm -hmm. And at this point I should plug that our system is better than Google Translate in the Ghanaian languages. Mm -hmm. we, we compare it. And uh, what, what makes it better in, in that regard? Well, there are, there are scientific ways of measuring quality, mm -hmm. right? So once you calculate the score, it's called the blue score, then you can compare and see how good a system is compared to another one. And so we see that we do a little bit better in like everyday, say, tree speech mm -hmm. when the translation. And so this kind of framework allows you to track the performance of your system over time. And, you know, people sometimes try certain things. Uh, in the beginning, when they tried certain things, it didn't work. You know, they would complain in the comments. And then we would, through the app, you can submit feedback, actually. And this is something that we ask all our users to do, to please submit uh, feedback through the app so we know where it is failing. Mm -hmm. And then we augment the training data that we are showing in those examples I mentioned with what we are learning. And over time, it just keeps improving. So in the beginning, it wasn't so great. Right now, three amazing. People are amazed. Even in cases it doesn't know words, it <laughs> kind of explains them. And the good thing is it's not just uh, Ghanaian languages. We are adding other African languages too. Which language, for instance, do you get people using uh, it the most? It's definitely, at this time, it's definitely three. Okay. We just added Dagbani. There's a big uh, interest in that in the north of the country. So that is growing, but right now, hands down, three is the most heavily used one. Great. And you said you do complement this with the book you've written. So what exactly is in the book? And what's the title? How can people get it? So the book is called Transfer Learning for Natural Language Processing. Natural language processing is the field of machine learning or artificial intelligence that studies language speech or processing of language, human language, or text. Right. So this book and transfer learning is the idea that nowadays you do not have to train a lot of these models from scratch anymore. You can download a model from somewhere that does something very close to what you need, and you can adapt it to your own scenario. The reason you want to do that is because it's going to make it a lot cheaper for you to solve your problem. So for instance, if you were building a computer vision system 
to detect objects, let's say criminals or some kind of illegal activity in cameras, you would not need to train that model from scratch, which would require maybe a supercomputer and you know, this huge amount of data that you don't have. Now you can download a model that is slightly different but very close and show it a few examples and it's already working for you. So this is transfer learning. And uh, it's an exciting idea because particularly in Ghana, right now a lot of these models, whether in computer vision or natural language processing, you know, Siri, Tree Siri, you know, uh, Google Translate for Tree, any kind of idea like that, we don't need as many resources anymore to solve that problem. So we really need to be aware of this to take advantage of it because we can really change our society with it. Yeah, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I shared a video with the uh, Tree Siri there and people were really amazed, uh, amazed by it. So would you say the book is more academic than anything else? Uh, it's less academic um, and a bit more practical. So in the academic space, we have the academics who really you know, study you know, they write papers and they study the grammar of stuff. And then there are people who take that and use that for like products. Mm -hmm. So those are the people I'm targeting. Uh, more engineers who want to learn the basic stuff so that they can build a product that can actually change somebody's life. Yeah. Fantastic. So let's talk about the music side and, and the rap. <laughs> How did that start also? Um, so the story, the way I remember it is as a kid, in, in Russia, when I was growing up, I was very good. My best subject was creative writing. Mm -hmm. This was in Russian, so stories and um, poems and those kind of expressive things. So the teachers just gave me the A plus and said, oh, this kid knows how to write Russian creative writing. Now it happens that in uh, Russia, uh, one of the greatest poets considered to be Pushkin, all right? This is a guy who happens to also be, have African ancestry. So one of his uh, ancestors was an African guy. We, didn't, we don't really know where from, but somewhere from mid-Africa, maybe Congo. And um, this guy happens to be the greatest Russian poet. So everybody knows him. And once they saw the connection, they were like, oh, that's Pushkin, right? <laughs> kind of like a joke. Uh, or a second coming of Pushkin or something like that. So I refer to that in my name. I'm a doctor now, so I added that to make it more unique. <laughs> yeah, so that's how, and I've always kind of kept doing that stuff, writing poetry or recording some music. Of course, in the beginning, it was like amateurish. Mm -hmm. With time, the quality increased. At some point, it became very professional, and people listened to it, people supported it. So I just keep doing it. I enjoy it. It's very important to me to be doing that. It's a very great way for me to relax. We were talking about that earlier. Um, to take my mind off, you know, the stress and so on, so and express myself, which is important. So when you're expressing yourself through poetry, music, uh, what what are the topics or subjects that you ideally like to uh, tackle? So um, a lot of the time in the beginning, I would spend a lot of time on my own in a room writing. So of course, it gets very cerebral, you know, so societal issues, you know, so conscious rap, if you like. So whether it's some kind of injustice in society or sometimes political issues, injustice uh, by the ruling class on you know, the common people or some economical issue or I don't know, if you're in the US, you can think of racism or anything like that. So anything I, just, I, I was going to bring it to Russia. Since you have roots in Russia, Ukraine, what do you make of it? So one thing I do have, in my ancestry, I have both Russians and Ukrainians. I have family right now in Ukraine some of them even in the armed forces defending their country, uh, and some relatives of mine, who are, uh, bombs getting rained on them. Mm -hmm. You understand, I have colleagues and family in Russia who are also you know, suffering from economic sanctions. So it's really a very negative thing. I think it needs to stop. Um, I think it affects everybody in the world now, right? Yeah. Good, and you have a new one out. Uh, you collaborated with someone. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, the song. Yeah, yeah we, we've been putting out a few songs. Uh, the reason why we've been pushing and we are shooting a video for is called Lies. Uh, I did this with an artist called Terry Weezy. So the, uh, the video actually right now is scheduled to be released on Republic Day, uh, so July 1st. Um, it talks about um, the aspect of society we live in now where there's a lot of, we are bombarded with information 
and a lot of it tends to be false, right? Whether somebody is selling something to you or somebody has some political agenda and so there may be fake news of some sort, right? There's a lot of lies, lies right, yeah. out there. So as, as a people, we have to make sure to be aware of that because I studied fake news in my past and it's an extremely difficult problem to solve. And at the end, the only way we solve it is we have responsibility to flag and not believe content that's obviously false, right? So it's education and we the people need to stop it, right? So what, what, uh, what else do you have coming up in terms of music and poetry? Uh, I'm putting out an album called Outlandish and uh, I've released a lot of the songs. Uh, we have a song with Kwata Budukusu called Need You. I have a song with uh, Kwajo Spiri called Wake Up. I have a song with Chromanting called Alien. These are all songs that have already come out. Uh, Mufasa, Hear Me Out. Uh, we have a whole lot more from the album, so I'm going to drop it. Um, in the, so watch out for, for it. It's going to be um, something you should hear about. Something you should hear, definitely. And do you get the chance to perform also? And uh, what are some of the places you have been performing and future performances we can look out for? So in Austin, Texas, I've done performances. Uh, before the pandemic, it was a lot easier. So Is it the South by Southwest? South by, the same city, right? So it's all the same bars that host. Um, we've done, uh, we actually have a club we collaborate with there, uh, an Afro club called Club Bantu. And so uh, we've done some Afrobeats. And so this is a place I've performed, uh, some Afrobeats. Uh, during the pandemic, we did a lot of concerts online. Um, but now I'm beginning to. So on this trip, for instance, I hope to do a show. So, um, but this is something that we'll need to ramp up. So you'll be hearing about it. Good. So you said this trip, meaning you come and you go, where are you based more? Uh, so Austin, Texas is where uh, currently the headquarters of a lot of my activities are. But I'm trying to increase uh, the frequency of my visits now. Um, I even have you know, a place in Accra now. So this is, this is home, so. Great. So there you have it, an amazing chat with a very deep, and of course, he's earned his doctor title. He's, he's really, really uh, deep on all levels. Uh, how can people follow you and uh, find you online also? Yeah, you, you, can, you can just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> or my, uh, my uh, username is Azunre, A-Z-U-N-R-E. So whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, you can find me there. I hope to see you. Thank you very much. It's been amazing speaking with you. Make sure uh, you like our, our content, comment, share, and keep coming back for more. Bye-bye.